Welcome to A4 Millionaire. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 successful habits of millionaires. Welcome to A Poor Millionaire. My name is Curtis. Uh, on this channel, we talk about success, we talk about motivation, we talk about skills to make you rich and skills to make you successful. So if that interests you, please subscribe now and press the like button if you enjoy the video. You can always wait till later on to subscribe or like, but why not just do it now? Press the like, press the subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later. All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about 10 reasons why 10 reasons why you're a millionaire. <laughs> no, we're gonna talk about 10 things, successful habits that millionaires have. And number one, we're gonna start off with 10. Oh, remember, the last one is the most important. That's the reason why it's the last one. Actually, we're doing it kind of, but they're all over the place. But for one of the top ones though, we're gonna start with the top one. The top one is being frugal. Successful habits of millionaires and successful people. Whether you're a millionaire, business owner, or a successful person, being frugal is key to success. You start off, if you want to become a millionaire, you have to be frugal with your money. You have to understand where your money's going. You have to make sure that you don't overspend. You need to make sure you're not buying Lambos before you're ready to buy your Lambo. This is how you get, if you want to get a Lambo, you can't just buy a Lambo day one. You need to actually spend your money appropriately. You need to be frugal with your money. You need to understand where your money's going. Make sure that you're paying the right people, do the right job at the right cost. You also make sure that uh, you're leaving, living as reasonable as possible. Still getting the fun and the value out of everything, but you're also making sure that you're getting the most for your money and not just paying money, just throwing money around. Now, you're not going to a crazy club and just throwing money in the air and buying bottles of champagne and all that sort of stuff. That's, that's not being frugal. Uh, there are people who take this to the extreme and they start spending so much time on very little money and obviously you shouldn't do that. Um, but if you're getting value out, if you enjoy it, some people enjoy being frugal. And a lot of times millionaires, they start off frugal and then they suddenly become like a multi-millionaire or a billionaire. And then they're still like parking down the street so they don't pay for parking. That's when being frugal actually hurts you. So there is a point where you're not getting the value that you're putting into it. Because if you're, let's say you're making a hundred and let's say you get, you get a high skill job. You're making $125 an hour, right? And then you're mowing your own yard, but you can pay a kid to mow your yard for $10 an hour. So it's gonna be $30 to mow your entire yard. Let's say you got a big yard, 30 bucks to mow your entire yard, and you and it's gonna take you three hours to do it. Your time is three times 125. It is not $30 an hour or $10 an hour. All right, so you're being too frugal. So yes, be frugal, but don't take it to the extremes, especially depending upon how rich you get and how fast you get. There comes a point where you're actually losing money by being frugal. So keep that in mind. Being frugal to me means being efficient and making sure that you're getting the efficient level of happiness for your money and you're also not spending money on ridiculous things that don't necessarily bring value or bring happiness. Number two, this is a big one. Uh, don't watch, successful millionaires are not watching a ton of television. I used to do this a long, long time ago, like 10 years ago, long, long, long time ago. I watched too much television. Back then, there was a whole bunch of great shows. Luckily, now there's very, very few great shows. So that's you know, bad on one hand and good on the other, right? Uh, now, there isn't a lot of television that I like to watch. So it makes it a lot easier. And the shows just keep getting worse and worse. Or maybe, maybe I mean, I would say maybe I'm getting older where the shows are just too stupid for basically it's just not mentally challenging enough or the shows are just getting stupid, or it's actually, it's probably a combination of both. Because a lot of the entertainment nowadays is just garbage. It's just ridiculous. It's it's like, it's actually working against your intelligence. You're watching the show, you're actually losing IQ points. All right, so watching four, hour four hours of television every night is a bad thing. And of course, YouTube is a two-edged sword, right? YouTube can be used to learn and become more successful. It can also be used to watch videos on, um, you know, cat videos, uh, challenge videos, uh, watching video games. You can use vi YouTube just like television where basically it's just garbage television where you're just watching crazy, ex exciting, crazy stuff and <clears throat> it's not actually doing anything to get you towards your goal of being successful, being a millionaire, or being rich. Or being all three. The trifecta. Uh, the next one. Number three, meditation. Guys, meditation is something that I've 
really haven't done a lot uh, in my life and well actually a lot of these things I haven't done a lot I've made mistakes on all these things but on number three the meditation now I've been finding lately that there's so much going on in my brain that when I go to try to go to sleep at night I just cannot go to sleep without meditating my brain just wants it wants that peace and quiet to work on stuff while I'm a conscious before it lets me be unconscious your brain is just this magnificent computer that just organic computer that does all sorts of things for you and you don't even realize it's doing it it's it, while you're sleeping you're coming up with great ideas while you're awake you're coming up with great ideas and while you're meditating you're coming up with great ideas and your brain needs all three it needs that conscious thought and when you're trying to you're trying to be successful you're, you pick a goal let's say you want to become um and um let's say something i need something business owner you're an entrepreneur you're trying to start a business you're trying to get off the ground you're trying to come up with creative ways to get your business up and going find money find people you're trying to do all these different things well your brain is consciously focused on it while you're at work working your brain needs to be consciously focused on it while you're just sitting calmly and that's the meditation part and then also your brain's going while you're sleeping your brain's going to be just constantly working on it that's your brain's working on your problems all the time non-stop and all it's going to do is just think about them so you got to make sure you put the right inputs in and make sure you give your time your brain time to think and meditate that's why suddenly meditations become even more important to me later I, I don't know why suddenly I just cannot sleep unless I actually meditate and if and if that's all you're doing guys that's a great start just meditate while you before you go to bed before you before you go to sleep just give your brain time to think about quietly quiet in our modern age you've got just constantly notification 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 like all these apps are like hey look at me hey look at me hey look at me hey look at me and you've got all of these things going on your brain just doesn't have time to think it's constantly being bombarded by new information so you need that calmness so you can actually look at the information and that's what meditation is it's basically just calm like it's a very very actual just tip this is like you got advanced meditation where you know you're floating around and you're like a Jedi and stuff. This is like uh, skill set one meditation, right? It's just basically giving your brain a break to calmly think about your problems and deal with them and sort through the crap that's built up in your brain. It's like plaque, right? And then when you go to sleep, uh, your brain's still gonna be sorting and working on it. It's got all this work to do and you just gotta let it do it. You gotta let it, you gotta give it time to do what you want it to do and allow it give it a, give it let it take a breath and get that get that med that's just skill one in meditation right you've got all the other skills and i'm i'm planning on working on it myself i'm planning on actually doing the the full meditation and hopefully i'll be floating rocks before you know it you know in a hundred years or so right the fourth thing millionaires do is they know when to say no this is a big one uh you've got to focus you got to prioritize uh you have to say no to people in your life who want your time and who just want to just take it from you they're like hey i want you to go work on this project for free at my house uh and you're like no I, i'm sorry i can't do that i have these goals and i can't do that i i can't go spend dedicate that time and of course you've always got friends who want you to go drinking with them want you to go party they want you to go do certain stuff you just got to basically say hey i don't have time for that i'll tell you what i'll see you at the next major event you're a good buddy why don't you come visit me we can go do lunch or something but i can't go spend you know 12 hours drinking with you and miss work the next day or basically be entirely wiped out for the whole weekend you, you've got to say no to people when they're constantly asking you for stuff that's that's encroaching upon you if you want to be successful you've got to set boundaries and enforce those boundaries by telling people no that's number four number five you've got to stick to an exercise this it's like i've i've violated all of these all right so i know how it is guys exercise program i started a new exercise I, i've been doing good i've been working out for like the last two years i built some good muscle and then i slacked off for a couple months now i'm getting back into the gym but when you get back in the gym sometimes you start pulling muscles when you're getting the, getting the rhythm going um you've got to be on a successful for your brain you need to have a little bit of exercise movement is key to keeping that brain nice and fresh and keeping you going millionaires and successful people they uh, like 76 percent of them do exercise it's just all there is to it you if you want to be successful one of the key ways you can help yourself obviously you could skip a couple of these and still be successful i skipped a lot of these and i was very successful in the past but if you want to be you want to increase the time to success you want to have that extreme jumps as fast as possible you need to hit all 10. so exercise pro program is going to be absolutely essential that's number five all right 
Number six, you need to wake up early. Now, this is another one that 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 I have a real problem with. Uh, lots and lots of people. You got to figure out what your 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 schedule is. Unfortunately, I am. I'm like the. I like work. I like waking up early. I feel like I get, I'm more productive. I get more done. I feel like you know, if I wake up early, I can have almost everything I need to get done by 11 a.m. Right, and then I have the rest of the day to get more stuff done. Right, but the problem is, is um, I feel like most creative and I'm most awake uh, probably about 10 o'clock at night, which means that I feel like the most creative is at 10 till 2 a.m. And the problem is once that my brain gets going, it just doesn't want to go to sleep at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And then I'm just messed up for the whole the next day. So I'm working on this. This is a process for me. But I feel like if you can work up, wake up early and you can be productive, that is like an ideal way to to make, be productive. Especially if you have a nine to five job. Waking up early, getting a whole bunch of stuff knocked out before you even get to work. Get to work early. Uh, start getting ready for work and make and having a plan and working through that plan is going to make you successful at that at that job uh, obviously you need to get a job where you can actually learn some skills and it's going to be in product obviously getting getting to work early at subway is just not really going to be required but you could still spend that early morning time exercising reading books and looking for another job or saving or figuring out how you can buy some real estate or some other, or investment or figure out how you can pay your car get a better job. There's all sorts of things you could do if you're waking up early and you're kicking butt and taking names. You're just adding the, the, you're adding time. So it just depends. Now, some people, like I said, some people are night people and it's like, it, I hope you're not a night person like me because it's just, it's, it, it's horrible when you're on, when you get in the zone at 10 o'clock at night and you basically just can't sleep. It's, it's horrible. So hopefully you're a morning person and hopefully you can get, and you should try both, try everything to be successful. See when you're most creative and work it out. But a lot of very successful people, a lot of very successful people wake up very early in the morning. Um, they work out, they get their routine down, they make their list and they get things done. All right, that's number six. Number seven, communication skills. Communication skills is what I'm doing right now. Communication skills is necessary for building strong relationships. You've got to build, you've got to be able to talk to people. You've got it as a habit, you need to make time to talk to all the people in your life and make sure that your relationships with them. And this is a constant battle, guys. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes daily on my communication. Um, you know, you you get upset at somebody because they screwed up and then you yell at them and then things are worse than they were. And you've got to constantly work at becoming a better skilled at communicating, relating, and getting your message across and learning from other people and also teaching other people. You've got to learn, teach, and communicate as well as you can. If you want to be successful, you've got to get employees, communicate with them, build your business, and even if you're buying real estate, if you're doing anything, and if you're if you're just going to be a high-skilled employee, well, the, if you can communicate with your fellow employee, fellow um, fellow people that you work with, <laughs> I forgot what that's called. Brain fart, right? All right. Anyway, if you felt your fellow employees working in the same company you're at, you can work with them. And then, of course, people work underneath you, your bosses. If you can communicate well with them and get everybody on the same page and start, you can you can start leading. You know, I've I've had jobs where I was communicating so well that I started taking over whatever department I was in or wherever I was working. And suddenly, you're just basically you're you're become the leader. If you can communicate and you can you can figure out what needs to be done and you start communicating well, you're naturally going to be placed in a position of authority. And obviously, the person in position of authority is going to start succeeding. They're going to get more jobs, more success, and eventually you're going to get either move on to another job, get paid more money, or you're going to get promoted either way. Uh, and if it's your business, obviously, you've got to be the one commit communicating, building the business. All right, moving on to the next one. Leaders are readers. Uh, successful habits of millionaires. I used to read a lot. I used to read lots and lots. I've read so many books, um, and that's pretty much how. I mean, when I when I was first starting out, I read books on everything, and and I'd have problems in a certain area. If I had problems dealing with people, I read books like How to Win Friends and Influence People. If I had problems, if I was trying to make money, I read books on making money. If I was trying to make sales, I read books on being a salesperson. If I was trying to do real estate, I read books on being in real estate. If you want to be successful, you've got to read books to get ahead. Now, obviously, nowadays we have this new thing called YouTube. So obviously, you can watch my videos. You can watch other people's videos. You just have to make sure. You have to. The best way, best way to check and see if the information is correct, you need to get out into what you're trying to do and then read the book on it. 
Well, if you do those two things, then you'll know if this person knows what they're talking about. And that's what I did. When I, when I went out in sales and I was trying my best and I read a couple sales books, I found a guy, I found Brian Tracy and I could just tell. This guy knew what he was talking about. He was talking and, er, and I, everything just lined up for me. And then all the little problems I had in my sales, I, I fixed and then I became an even better salesperson. That's the whole idea of reading a book is so you can fix the problems that you have and you can become better at whatever you're trying to achieve. All right. Number nine, build strong relationships. This is kind of part of communication, so let's just let's just go back one. Let's call it uh, that was number seven. Build strong relationships. We've already talked about this. You have to build strong relationships if you want to succeed. You've got to build strong relationships. Now, some people succeed just simply by building strong relationships. If you're if you have a super strong, good working relationship with uh, rich people or successful people, um, they're going to come to you're going to have ideas. They're going to have ideas and they're you're going to become successful just by knowing them. Uh, Lots of people have become rich and famous because they were friends with someone else who became rich and famous. And then they learned and what you and, and basically catapulted off of their success. And they said, hey, this guy's doing it. This guy's no different than me. Um, I know exactly what he's doing because he's my best friend. I'm going to copy him and I'm going to be successful. You know how many people have done that? And then the other thing is where uh, the successful person hires his buddy and then his buddy goes out and works for him and then his buddy becomes successful because, uh, you know, like he becomes an actor and then the guy's like, hey, I'm going to be your manager. And the guy's like, whatever. And then he becomes your man- the manager of his buddy and eventually he gets good at managing him and everybody likes him and then suddenly he's managing other people, right? It's just, it's a, You can become... The quality of the relationships you have is going to be key for your success. The quality of relationships you have with your employees, your family, um, your peers, and your friends. So you've got to hang out with good people. If you don't hang out with good people, you're going to have some serious issues. All right, number nine, plan every day on paper. Now, this is one of the ones I've been struggling with and I need to really get good at. You need to plan ahead what you're trying to accomplish. And and I need to do this because... if you're if you do all 10 of these things and you're planning ahead and you're religiously making sure that you've got hey this is what i'm going to do tomorrow morning this is what i'm going to do tomorrow afternoon and i've also have what i'm going to start doing the day after that i have my whole week planned out then you have no then you know what you can get done and and start knocking things out because you know when you get to work or you get into your business you you drive let's say you got a business you drive into your business you you walk in your employees start hitting you with all the problems and stuff and all those urgent things start knocking off those important things you're like hey in order to grow the business i need to hire three more employees well instead of hiring three more employees putting the ad in and starting to actually get phone calls from employees before you can even start doing all that start thinking about it what do i need to hire how much i'm going to pay him all that good stuff you got three you got uh six other employees come to you with all the fires and all the other stuff and they're like blah 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 blah, blah right you got to build a list all right Figure out what's important, write it on the list, and say, this is what I need to accomplish tomorrow if I want to be successful. This is what I need to do before I move to the next level on this this project. This is what I need to do before I move to the next level on this project. This is the list of things. And this is how you become successful also, is this is basically your goals. All right, these are your goals for one day. You need to have goals for one day, one week, one month, uh, 12 months, uh, five years, 10 years. You always have, this is basically your goals for the day. Set those goals and start, this is a daily habit of setting goals and reaching them. All right. And the number one, the number one thing that you have to do, guys. This is the one thing that I use to become successful. This is this is the key to success right here. Is you have to work. And I mean like a lot of work. Basically what I did was and a lot of a lot of people are are like are very much like me on this. A lot of successful people is that basically they just get so wrapped up in their work, they just forget about everything else. This is a, this is a key to success. If you if you're willing to outwork everyone else, it's basically it's, you don't have to be smarter than uh, than the guy you're in competition with. You basically just have to spend more time on the problem to find the solution than he does. Because you know, even if he's 10% smarter, but you you work twice as hard, you're just gonna outwork him. You, you're gonna constantly be coming up with more solutions. You can outcreate him while even if they're trying to copy you. You can, I mean, they they could be copying your idea, but you've already created another idea and you're already working on your third idea. It's like Tesla right now. Tesla is so far ahead of all the competition that the uh, competition can't keep up with them. And that's where you got to be. You've got to be constantly working. And and this is this is like, you know, life balance. Uh, a lot of people have the issues with life balance. And this is basically, basically the opposite of life balance. So really, if you want to be successful, you've got to pay the price. In order to pay the price, you really have to enjoy what you're doing. That's the reason why you need to find something you enjoy doing. 
Um, and you try a different, couple different things. You don't have to stick with one thing. You could say, hey, I want to be a day trader. Um, I want to be a high-skilled plumber, or I want to be a uh, real estate uh, flipper, or I want to rent, buy and hold rent real estate. Um, there's a million ways you can make money. You need to find something that you're good at and that you enjoy, and then you're basically going to have to put the hours in. You got to put that 10,000 10, hours in, and the faster you put that 10,000 hours in, the quicker you're going to become successful. And then even after you put your 10,000 hours in, then you got to start working on your 100,000 hours because those are the people that really hit the stratosphere with 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 how how much and you've got to start keep expanding and growing. And that that work it, it, it's it's hard to explain guys it's hard to explain because a lot of people are used to working night working eight hours and really they don't even work eight hours you know they're working six hours right six of real actual work they have the concept of them working you know 12 hours a day is just completely foreign and I know some people they have commitments where they can't work 12 hours a day and you could still get rich working less less time but it's gonna be the, it's the slow train guys you want to be on the fast train you want to tear it up you're gonna have to dedicate serious time and you have to focus and you're gonna have to work. It's just, it's the number one thing. This is why I could I could get away with, with uh, violating so many of these other rules because basically all I did to become successful, here's the key. The number one thing all I did to become successful is I just worked nonstop for basically like 10 years. No, nothing, no social life, no crazy parties, no nothing. I just worked. Now, obviously every once in a while I took a day off and when did something crazy um, but for the most part for 10 years of my life I did nothing but work and I, I streamed my streamlined my life everything that didn't involve work I basically cut out and you know and, and it's good it's unhealthy it's a little bit unhealthy but I enjoyed what I was doing and I wanted to be successful I was willing to pay the price and, and I you know I didn't know any better you know or as far as like it's like it's there's two sides there's two sides of this you know it's like I look back on it and I'm like, man, I was so unhealthy with how hard I worked. But at the same time, though, I was paying that price up in full. I was getting my 10,000 hours in and I was knocking it out. Now, here's one of the other problems, though. You might spend 10,000 hours learning to um, do something because you think that's what you want to do. Like I spent 10,000 hours in the computer industry um, building a computer business, a wholesale computer business. And I knew that business inside and out. Well, that market completely changed. And I lost that business and I can't create that business today. So that 10,000 hours that I spent learning and, and of my life of learning all those skills necessary. Now, a lot of those skills translate over, but a lot of them don't. A lot of them are specific to uh, building a wholesale computer business, training sales reps, building that business, computers, all that stuff. And that market, dealing with those vendors, that sort of stuff. And now I've got to translate all those. I translate all those skills over to building a real estate uh empire right i love the word empire forgive me for saying so so that's that's how you do it guys you spend the time to make the money guys i really appreciate you listening to my 10 successful habits i hope that you if you follow all 10 of these i know you'll be successful i plan on working on it because i know it's it's hard to knock out all 10 i know you when i hear these videos i'm like okay there's 10 10 items and i've got to knock out all 10 items right well, I'm gonna. I know that I know where I'm weak, and I hopefully you know where you're weak, and hopefully you can work on that, and hopefully we can all grow rich and grow successful together. I appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow.